hey guys, <laughs> my name's Geeksay. I'm a content creator, been doing this for almost eight years. You can find me on YouTube, twitch.tv. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on t all that stuff. I'm a content creator. You gotta be everywhere. So that's me. And uh, really excited to do this, JD. Thanks for uh, letting me pimp my stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Being a content creator is like any platform we can take to just talk about ourselves. We'll take it. Absolutely. Well, like you, I feel like you have to be on every platform and it's like, I, you, you can only do so much, right? Like, and I don't have an editor. I don't use editors. So it's all me that's doing everything. And it's, there's not enough time in the day, but I'm trying to figure it out. Like today I'll do a batch edit of hopefully TikToks and a little bit of YouTube shorts. Mm -hmm. And like, it, it's funny because like, TikToks can be as long as you want, but YouTube shorts have to be 60 seconds yeah. or less. Yeah. So it's really funny how like you have to like, you really have to balance it where you're like, okay, this one, I want to tell a story. And if it goes over 60, no big deal. But this one, I want to make sure that is, you know, for both. So it's, yeah, it's, it's a balancing game. Mm -hmm. You've been doing this for eight years though. Um, mm -hmm. Like, did you ever conceive the idea of like being a full-time content creator? No, no, no. never. Th this just, it just, happened yeah how how did it happen um uh, so i moved here to kamloops god like 11 years ago now mm. and uh no i i was just like I, I was done with my job so i was a a chef and uh i'm a bread steel chef by trade didn't know what i wanted to do so i uh quit and then i did what did i do after that I, I was I was lost, right? So right. sorry, I'm trying to figure out where I was with jobs. Right, right. now, I was lost. And I thought I was gonna do, I thought I was gonna do uh, child's or like um, support work for okay. younger younger people, like you know, twenty and younger. Mm. And then uh, I talked to everyone in my neighborhood because I didn't want to go to school yet for it because I find that you go to school and you're like, oh, I might not end up liking this, right? And like you waste a bunch of money. And yeah. by then, I was older I already went through one career so I was like okay well let me just you know volunteer I'll volunteer with a couple of companies and that's what I'll do and I did have a, a, a little bit of a nest egg saved so while I was volunteering the girl I was dating at this time was a bartender so she'd be out at night and I didn't have a ton of friends here right I haven't made them yet so I was like what am I gonna do so I I, I just decided to start streaming uh, using my Toshiba laptop oh. and I started streaming a game called Hearthstone. I'm sure you know Hearthstone's yes. card yeah. game. Yeah, I just started streaming that and uh, from there it just kind of snowballed and I saw the opportunity eventually. Uh, but the, the reason I did it was I just wanted to do it, right? I just wanted to have fun and it's a way to interact with people. Right, right. So you start off with, with, with all things, you start off with a, a, a strategy card game, turn-based card game. Yeah. And you have since evolved into being what I feel is one of the foremost experts in uh, a first person shooter, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare oh, 2. No, I, I wouldn't go that far, but thank you. I, I, I know a lot about DMZ, not the other stuff. Fair enough. You know? Yeah. But like, OK, so I will admit, like I I found your content on YouTube because I was struggling i was fucking struggling with a mission mm -hmm. and you came along and was like this is how you do it step by step bam 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 and mm -hmm. like your guides that you provide your uh your community and your followers is is not only like informative but it's you're very genuine in your delivery and your how you go about like explaining things and i think that 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 persona or lack thereof just your own personality like really shines through uh the content you create I, that's very kind of you to say thank you so much um it, it's funny because i i think if you put on that character it's very tough for you every day mm. to be that character yeah and the way i make content is i'm just like if you met me in real life I would be the same person that you saw online or you're seeing right now. Like uh, I don't, I don't church it up. I don't do anything different. This is who I am. Right. Uh, some, and, and that's the best way to figure out if people like you, right? Like if people don't like, you know, I get a lot of stuff. I just got a message today actually on, on YouTube comment being like, Hey, turn down the positivity because you seem like someone that's in a, in a crazy place, just took their pills. I was like, I, well, you know, like this isn't like, I can't turn it down. It's not like I'm putting on a character. It's who I am. Right. Yeah. Um, but you know what? Here's the thing. It, it, the other darker side of it is like, 
when it comes to work, which this is, yeah. I am very uh, harsh on myself though. Like I'm positive about the game and, and doing things, but when it comes to like, you know, goals and like how I'm doing, it's always like, I'm always bringing my, I'm my own worst critic, mm. always have been, always will be. Um, I really appreciate what you said about my guides and everything. And, and it, it's, it's really funny when you talk about like, when you're doing YouTube, mm. guides are something that are evergreen content, that are great to have, but at the same time, people follow you because you're that guide guy. They're not following you because of your personality, which is the ultimate goal in any content creator. Is they so it, it, you have to do a fine balance. Right. And going from you know, I, I've transformed from Hearthstone because that was the game that I could run on a Toshiba laptop and stream it at the same time. Uh, I went from that. I, d I dabbled in PUBG for a bit. Hmm. Then my next jump was to Warframe. My next jump after Warframe was to Tarkov. Uh, I did Escape from Tarkov for four years, and then just this past year i jumped from tarkov to dmz just and, just this past uh, yeah. year yeah because dmz has only been around for a year it's since november like early like or late november i think mm. it came out yeah warframe being a free-to-play uh hearthstone i think it is free to play yeah, free to play yeah. yeah uh tarkov like what drew you mm -hmm. there well, I, I love first person shooters. Okay. Uh, and the reason I love DMZ is the same reason I love Tarkov. It's like, so when you play a battle royale game, right? Say you and I play a battle royale game. Yeah. If you get 10 kills and I get three kills, but I win, you don't feel great, right? Like the person that wins feels good, but yes. the person that got 15 kills, but they died before they got the chicken dinner or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. They kind of feel crappy about them, not crappy about themselves, but you're like, I didn't win. Even yeah. though I played really well, I didn't win. Yeah. Where Tarkov, I, I just, I, I loved the, um, I, I loved the, the fact that there could be multiple winners. It's like a battle royale, but there can be multiple winners. You can all extract if you want. Uh, it wasn't just PVP. That's something I always look for because I don't like, you know, I'm in my mid thirties and I'm, I'm and I'm just not that gamer anymore. So right. I'm looking for like ways I can interact and have a, a story at the same time. Cause that's where I'm kind of wanting to put my content also is, you know, uh, me in the foreground, the game in the background kind of thing, me telling a story. And uh, so I did Tarkov for a long time. Plus I was like, there's so many, like Tarkov was really small when I started playing it, like really a small knit community. Right. And it, I saw it as like, there's, there's so much that I can make guide wise. And that's what I've been known for. So I was like, I can make a bunch of guides and then, you know, try to do more. Um, and then I, I yeah, I was there. I, I became the gunsmith guy because of how I did my videos for gunsmithing in, in Tarkov. And then, yeah, yeah it just, it just kind of went there. You saw an opening for content. Uh, and also you, you expressed this many times before is like, you know, if you find a glitch or a hack or something like that within a game, like you don't want to keep it to yourself. You want to share it because like, what's the point in, in keeping that, you know, it's close to the chest when there's a community mm -hmm. out there who is passionate about the exact same game. And so mm -hmm. being a gunsmith, you are essentially, you know, doing that you're starting off with like, this is what I know. This is what's helped me. Hopefully this helps you. Yeah. So gunsmith was like, just like you had to complete these missions right. and, and, and you would like, you had to build a gun a certain way right. or like, here's how to do this mission. Here's how to do this mission. And like, because Tarkov was so difficult, like it is still to this day, <laughs> one of the most difficult games. Like you need a, like a, a guide that's a phone book. So, you know, I saw it as a way to uh to to start doing things to get like you know to get my name out there to mm -hmm. get to build an audience and youtube at this time my youtube wasn't good at all i wasn't like i remember doing my first gunsmiths and uh, i was actually in ukraine with my wife who's from there mm -hmm. and we were visiting her parents and i was like honey look at this i'm getting uh, two new followers a day from this video you know i was like i was so <laughs> jacked at that right yeah. like i was so excited and uh you know, I try to tell myself now, look at like where I came from, look at how jacked I was when the, you know, I was only getting two a day and, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you're always putting the flag, you know, the flag a little further, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, oh, you know, if I get this many viewers or this many, you know what I mean? And then it's like, nah, now it's a little further back and a little further back. Yeah. <laughs> no, I get that. Absolutely. Um, like I, I, I said, I said to you beforehand, like I've been in this, I've been in the media industry for like 20 years. Uh, my social media though, like it's, I'm proud of where I am and it's continuing, like it's a continuing uh, uh, challenge for me 
And mm-hmm. I, I'm hoping to get to a certain point, but yeah, like, yeah, I, I know the feeling of like, okay, once I hit that field goal, it's going to move because I want to achieve the next goal and then the next goal. And it, it is, it is both satisfying as well as it's just like, it grinds on you every once in a while. Like, come on, where, where, where is yeah. the audience? Where do I got to go? Well, I, I, you know, I see a lot of people that, that, that yell about this, mm-hmm. but they're still doing the same thing every day. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, they're like, they're like, no one's watching my stuff, but then they're putting out the same content or doing the same thing. And it's like, well, you know, no one's watching it now. I don't think you putting out the same stuff is going to, you know what I mean? Like you have to, there has to be something to try to change. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you know, that's where I'm like, I, I think t- like TikTok and, and YouTube shorts, but you know, TikTok is like this new thing that can be so powerful for people. Like you can build a brand and you can build a channel yeah. if you just hit the algorithm and just like in and, and it it lets you just take swings after swings after swings and uh it's really exciting i really love it at the same time i really uh i'm really like weirded out about it because i don't see the i currently i know a lot of of my peers do see yeah. the uh people coming from tiktok but I, I i i do okay on my tiktok but i never have anyone really being like hey i came here from tiktok it's only been like three or four people <laughs> Uh, that has actually told me that right so it is tough but like i see what it can do with other peers of mine like other content creators i've seen that it can transform channels Mm -hmm. and it could just really like it's a good way to really sell yourself and not the game on tiktok and that's what i'm trying to do you know we talk about this what i was just talking about was like trying to create stories i'm trying to do that now i'm trying to really create stories and try to you know um um, use different editing techniques. I'm really, f- I'm, re- I've been really into storytelling the past, like I would say month. I'm really focusing in on it and trying to get better at at how I tell what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, no, absolutely, and it and it shows honestly. Like, thank you. Uh, being a, a, a like a, a one man content creator, not unlike yourself. Like, I'm my own editor. I'm my own producer. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like it, it is, it is all about being. Uh, you know, critiquing yourself as you go, but also pushing yourself, challenging yourself and seeing how other people do something and go, oh, I wonder how, if I could figure that out and then maybe I can incorporate that here. And, you know, it's it's always a, you know, self growth is what, you know, pushes you along. And essentially you're the one pushing yourself along with that growth. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. But with that, you're also looking at people and you're like, why are they getting this views? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it, it, you need to say it. But like, if, if it is jealousy plays a huge part in this industry, I'm not going to lie to anyone. Yeah. You know, you're 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 always looking at your peers, you're always judging, uh, you know, the person next to you or or whatever, and you're like, okay, well, they did this, and this video got how many? Like, what it what is it? Is it just that I'm not likable, or is it like my like wh- like I drive myself crazy on that stuff lately? Actually, I'm pretty proud to say, like, I can step away from it. Mm-hmm. And I can kind of just be like, I'm very happy for them. I'm very happy. Like I'm trying to just stay positive and be like, I need them to grow so that I can grow. Because if if this person grows, it's just good for the game. Yeah. You know, all the power to them. Yeah. Uh, but the game I'm in right now is is dying. So I don't I don't know what to do. So I'm lost again. I'm I'm lost at sea, and there's nothing out. And I'm kind of having a meltdown currently in my current state of uh life i would say yeah let's let, let's let's touch back to that because we have we have uh, gone yeah, on this yeah, wonderful yeah. tangent here no no worries <laughs> we uh we yeah. went from tarkov uh to dmz which has been out mm-hmm. for a year we're currently into season six and yep. uh you you are you're starting to smell uh the decay of the corpse as it were and that's nothing to do with the zombies that are on the way with yeah. dmz but uh you okay so you went from tarkov to call of duty and started yeah. making content with that and go ahead and express yourself with like so, how it know, started I'll, I'll, I'll actually say why i transitioned in the first sure, place though please. you know playing a game you know th- and this has to go with like self-reflection of a creator if you're an artist if you're any sort of if you do anything like this yeah i played tarkov for four years right and i felt like the people that are hardcore in the community 
know me already. Like I was getting about 200 to 250 viewers every stream. My YouTube wasn't doing well, but my stream was doing really well. Right. I, I was I was very successful at what I did. I could I made you know a, a very decent living. I felt good, but the thing was, I knew that the hardcore players that love Tarkov that are there from you know the start of one season to the end of the next, they know who I am, and they're just choosing not to watch me. And some are choosing to watch me. And then what happens is every season is every six months or so. They're they're long seasons, so then we'll get an update. You know, the game will ping for like, it'll go huge for about a month and then it starts dribbling down. Right. Right. So I was looking at this and I was like, you know, I'm doing okay, but like, there's just not enough updates in this game. You know, I'm only, I I, I feel like I plateaued in this game. I feel like I'm not going to get any bigger. I'm, you know, I, I might like go a little bit bigger. Like I can like trickle into the, maybe the threes or something, maybe, maybe, but it just wasn't happening for me and i had to be realistic about okay i need to i want to play a game that has maybe a bigger audience that i can bring this stuff to and to be honest i was just burnt out hmm. you know i played ten thousand hours of this game ten thousand hours thousand hours ten thousand hours well, after four yeah. years after four years yeah multiple 24-hour streams multiple like you know streamathons uh you, you know offline just making videos offline right uh 10 000 hours i did and four years of gameplay like i was burnt out i wanted to play something else uh during this time i was getting married and i i talked to the wife i i told her you know like on our honeymoon we have to talk about me be me transitioning to this other game because i'm kind of interested in this call of duty dmz mm. and you know while the honeymoon was going on it got released i watched it i, th I thought the gameplay it wasn't it, season one was pretty rough, but I saw like the I, I saw the the bones of it. And I was like, the bones are good. Okay, yeah. the bones are really solid. Right now, we can build up on it, and they have in six seasons. Like it's went from night to day, like in in what it's like. But unfortunately, yeah, like you you asked, I think I I think it is not going to be there next year. I don't. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> What, what okay so uh yeah. you know i i i i stated i i feel as though is that you're an expert um and you yeah. you like without any sort of debate and play a lot more than me uh mm -hmm. i maybe have about 300 hours onto it what is it that you feel is like you're you're seeing the death throes of call of duty dmz yeah well you look at like the advertisements of like okay so cod next um yeah. is coming up on the 5th of october right that's when we find out about everything from warzone cod mobile uh the new uh dm zombies uh, stuff like that right right the problem is they they put out something yesterday that said what it said warzone multiplayer it had like four slides warzone multiplayer um uh zombies and on, on mobile mm. there wasn't anything about dmz so that scares me even though it is part of warzone technically i i it would have had its own slide if it, if they were going to update it i feel like the other thing you have to look at is you know this season they didn't add anything to it they did make amazing changes that i'm super happy about yeah. but they didn't add any functionality things anything to change the game the gameplay wise with like with new mechanics they didn't right. add any new mechanics nothing like that there's a, oh, still a bunch of uh glitches and bugs that are, are ever present and they're not getting fixed yeah and a lot of people are talking about how like now i don't know for sure mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people that are like oh no it's it's going to be it's going to be fine don't don't worry like it's it's staying and like i'm not saying it's gone for sure but like the way i look at things and the way i'm seeing things i'm just putting two and two together and being like it's not looking good um now do i want it to of course i do i need it to stay. i want like i'm doing really well in this game yeah uh i want it to stay but like it's just not the reality of things right now mm. and a lot of people talk about how much money it's making like uh, with the bundles and everything and the dmz bundles i don't i don't think it's as big as people think yeah but also people i don't think also realize is the the amount of developers you need on this game mode it's a lot more than warzone yeah because it's 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 a constant thing yeah, it, yeah it's a constant thing you have to keep making new additions you have to keep like it's not something like Warzone where you can just like, hey, here's a new map or here's a, like balancing this and that. Like yeah. you need, a, a, I think, a bigger team than 
a lot of people would like to admit or think that they would need. Mm. And I think Activision's just looking at the team they would have to have on it and just say, you know, it's a, I, I don't think it's enough for the player base and whatnot. Yeah. No, a live service game is something that is like, it's a living, breathe, breathing entity. It constantly <sighs> needs attention. And, you know, I, I can understand where you can see and like, for anyone who is unfamiliar with uh, DMZ, uh, the launch of season six was basically a, 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 sl a slight tweak here, a slight tweak there, but nothing other than the same from the prior season. Now there's going to be a a uh, a switch over or a reboot or something like that on October seventeenth, which is going to introduce apparently zombies and night yep. mode and a whole bunch of stuff which is great but you know for like yourself and myself it's like uh it, okay big ta-da season six where the fuck is it <laughs> yeah every mode's getting the the zombie mode right so you can't even say that's just special to dmz either right and i'm still excited for dmz yeah. october you know what i mean I'm, I'm gonna be out of town for the first like i get two days and then i'm out of town for a week for right. work but um, I'm still really excited to, to, to have this and everything, but it, it's, it's not what we need. Right. Like, it's not like the, it's not the mechanics that we want, like to, to make this successful, you, you need, you, you need new mechanics. You need it fresh. You need to keep changing things. And I, I, I don't think it's there and I'm really excited for zombies. Like, let's, let's not, you know beat around the bush i think dm zombies whatever they call it like all outbreak 2.0 which is uh the old outbreak from cold war i'm really excited for it but at the same time what makes dmz dmz is the pvp aspect yes right a lot of people talk about how they want uh a pve only mode and they hate that pvps in dmz but i think w what's so exciting about the mode and what makes it uh, you know any extract royale like when you're looking at any extract royale that's what these are called mm. i call them at least um whenever you look at something like this what makes it your heart pounding and, and you so excited is you don't know what's around any corner yeah right you don't you 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 have this item that you need you just completed something you have to go get out with this what, what's around this corner like you're just but if it's just like oh i know it's zombies you know like <laughs> yeah. i don't know how how much people are going to play it and that's yeah. what i'm worried about right is yeah. the replayability when there is players in that game mode is a lot <laughs> because you're going to die to them a lot you're going to like and then those exciting times make your blood just pump and you're so excited i don't know if a pve only mode is going to be able to do that like what's the carrot at the end of the stick going to be for outbreak 2.0 right. and, and that's something we still need to see yeah when, so when it comes actually to uh, the, the conversation between PvP and PvE, like, yeah, I do know that heart pounding, adrenaline rushing, like just got to get to that damn helicopter in time and I can I can get this mission done. I can get an X-Feel streak extended. It is it can be frustrating and infuriating. And yeah. yes, the the players are what make DMZ PvP what it is. You can shoot bots and AI and NPCs all you want, but it's the unknown aspect that makes it uh, fun, entertaining, exciting, frustrating. And uh, there have been many times where you've taken it upon yourself to like just point out to your viewing audience, like it's just pixels. It's just mm -hmm. a game. Like there's no need to get all worked up about it. Like I think I think that's like one of the best pieces of advice for playing a frustrating at times game like this is just like it's just a game did you really lose anything other than a little bit of time no yeah well you know this this comes down to like when i was playing tarkov or for or like oh there's a lot of loot or uh looter extract royale shooters i played yeah it's like if you're only having fun when you extract that's an issue right mm. like the fun has to be you going to do stuff you shooting the guns you killing the boss or like the bosses or the the pe the the enemies mm -hmm. and then you actually engaging with players is fun too even if you lose you're having fun getting better at the engagements doing something yeah where i have an issue is when people are like i can't like they're, they're just i i get frust so i get frustration when you can't get out and extract but you can't say you're not having fun because if you're saying you're not having fun at all like 
Why, I get that's why are you playing the game? <laughs> but why are you playing the game? Right? Like, and, and there are limits to it. I know, like, listen, I've had bad days where I'm just like, I can't do anything. I'm right. just done. Right. And you do have to walk away. But 99% of the time, even if I'm dying, I'm making, I'm having fun with it. Yeah. Right? Like, that's the thing. So, um, yeah, you know what? It's, it's actually DMZ has blown up my YouTube on levels that I've never gotten to. I've gotten some crazy levels with Tarkov. Don't get me wrong. Like I have a 2 million viewed video with mm-hmm. Tarkov, uh, all that stuff, but I've never had the consistency and people enjoying my highlight videos as they are. And, you know, like I said, I, I'll be the first person to say like, this sucks that DMZ is leaving, but I'm not going to be like, no, it's not. Like I like you know what I mean like it just it, it, I just see it leaving like it's just yeah. it makes sense and yeah I don't I, th- I yeah, think I'm I, sorry I, I think I think what you're being is optimistically realistic yeah you know what? in my latest video though I said like right now I'm not seeing like I'm always glass half full right I'm right. always a glass half full kind of guy it's right. it sucks to be that guy but I am that guy and sometimes it's annoying right but with the latest video I put out put out talking about the future of DMZ I said I'm not a glass half empty guy either right. right now all i am is a guy with a glass like i don't know i don't know october 5th we'll find out october 5th right am i gonna here's the thing though am i gonna be shocked if they don't talk about it not really am i gonna be shocked if they do talk about it very much so like i would be impressed if they talk about dmz in the future of it i don't mm. think it's gonna happen so i i, I want to be surprised i want to be excited uh, you, you touched on it uh, a few moments ago, um, your community and your viewership. You you have mm-hmm. an active Discord and you've actually started to incorporate uh, a, a top five of the week. And, and these, mm-hmm. these are videos that are sub, uh, submitted from your fans and your followers. And um, what, what was the, the synapse that fired to create this? Um, I've, I've seen so I, I've seen it on other channels and. A lot of times in Tarkov, they would just take your content. Oh. So they would just take a video of my, like a clip of mine, something really cool. And then they like, they'd make a montage and I would be upset about it. I'd be like, that's my content. I want to use that. I don't want you to use that to give it to me back. Right. You know, but like, I also know that there's a lot of, of people out there that want their videos in those montages that want like, you know, I always make sure that I post their uh, YouTube if, if they have a YouTube, you know, and, and they're posting it saying I want this in Eclipse thing. So I kind of wanted to do it in the sense of like a, a, a the right kind of way of doing a clips montage. And right. I didn't see one for DMZ. So I was like, oh, I'll, I'll make one. It, I have a strong community that would love this. Unfortunately, it, it is in hiatus right now because of the future of what's happening. And I'm trying to figure out the future of my content. Um, I'm really enjoying playing DMZ right now, mm. but in the background, I am trying to figure out some other stuff with with other things. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Speaking of background, wonderful segue yeah. setup. Thank you. Yeah, can you You're walk welcome. us through your studio? Um, yes. Um, uh, I can't change my camera. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but that's like, fine. <laughs> all it is is like it's it, it, when we when we bought the house, yes. it, it was like a built in shelf and i knew exactly that uh, this was going to be my recording studio right uh on my right here i do have some posters it's of my first year anniversary i used to do posters every anniversary Mm. um and then i found out how much they were to ship and like it 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 destroyed me because like (laughs) the poster cost me like say 14 dollars to make but for me to ship it was 30 dollars canadian to the states oh geez right it was so rough because they they're they're wide right so like they're really awkward to ship so i have some posters I do have a two PC setup, which I didn't have for a long time. I, you know, you don't need it, but where the level I am and the content I'm making, I, I need it. Mm. Uh, I also have uh, the dog cam. I can't switch camera, but I do have a dog cam. My puppy's sleeping right here. Right. Uh, and then uh, I'm a big hat guy, or at least I used to wear a ton of hats. Mm. So I have a lot of hats showing up. I've got my Batman, my 1989 Batman and Joker still in this package, which I'm really proud of. And then... Um, yeah, just some floodlights from Amazon that are super cheap. I've got uh, the Elgato ring light over here. I've got uh, a very fancy, like, um, I don't even know what type of light it is. It's like a, a professional light over here. Cool. And uh, yeah, just some, uh, what are these? These are some of those LEDs from a fancy company. It's not one of those. It's like uh, one of the light brands, the popular light brands that do Philips? all this stuff. Yeah, it's a Philips Hue. Oh, That's what it is. okay. It's Philips Hue which you can find this kind of stuff way cheaper than 
yeah. Philips Hue. Yeah, yeah, it's that. That's my studio, and and yeah, I don't know if you have any questions, ask. <laughs> what do you got in the the Funko Pops in the top there? Oh, the Funko Pops. I've got uh, again mostly Batman. Yeah. So I've got uh, the Joker. I've got half Joker, half Batman. That's a special pop. Yeah. I've got it. I'm a huge nerd on uh, clowns. I don't know what it is. It's, they scarred me when I was young. Like, I'm really scared of them, but I love them. <laughs> and then I have, like, uh, that one's actually super rare. One of my pops here is the Joker, but it's the the heist Joker when he's doing the bank heist. So I have that one. That one's, and then uh, the killing joke. The, oh, from, yeah, nice. I've got that pop, too. Yeah, cool. yeah. So I, I'm very much into, like, uh, comic books. I really love comic books and, and horror uh yeah, all that stuff. I'll, I'll share something with you. I uh, give you a, yeah. a bit of a breather here. Um, so I'm I'm 44 years old, and I only started watching horror movies two years ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's because my girlfriend, I love her to bits, uh, yeah. was a big fan of horror movies, but I was scarred by uh, like a horror movie experience or something like that as a child, and it was just yeah. it was a complete write off for me. So only for the past two years, I've started watching horror movies and really start to appreciate like the 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 scare factor as well as the comedic factor sometimes but a, like yeah. a lot of production and and a lot of effort and and talent goes into some of these flicks and uh you can't see it like i have like this is all this is all nes this is uh, uh playstation one playstation two xbox xbox 360 like my video game collection is here off to the side I have uh, actually a brand new collection of like horror memorabilia now. Oh, nice! Comic books. So, like, yeah. Who's your go-to right now? Who's your, who who who's your your horror guy? Who's my like, horror which, guy which right now? Who's your character that you really like? I like think you, it, it, yeah. it's it's a it's a bit of a it's a bit of a long uh, pull, but like the creature or the the character from Jeepers Creepers, I think is just like it's it's not yeah. it's not the mainstream. It's not the big three. It's just just weird enough and just uh mysterious enough that it's like i i kind of am drawn to this character right now justin long's first kind of bigger role was jeeper creepers yeah, 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 i remember that movie it was actually really good i thought jeeper creepers one was fun you know yeah. i thought it was a, a great horror uh right now i'm really obsessed with art the clown from oh. Terrifier. oh yeah yeah terrifier 2 that came out is unbelievable that unbelievable th that brought headlines <laughs> I, it was it, it's just, the thing i do love about horror also uh, as a content creator i can appreciate this is they're doing it on a budget yeah so they have to make the story and everything on a on a really slick like low budget yeah um and then lately actually one of the best horror movies i've seen in a long time aside from terrifier 2 recently has been this movie it's on youtube it's free it's not like bootlegged it's actually put on youtube it's called Hell House LLC. Now, found footage movies aren't my thing. Okay. I think the Blair Witch was was the first of its kind. It was the craziest, like the best. Yeah. Then there were kind of just some that I just, I didn't buy it. Okay. This Hell House LLC, the first one and the second one are on there. Mm. The first one is so good like this this is such a great found footage movie i okay. can't i i've been i've been praising it for so long uh for the past two weeks actually so long two weeks sorry <laughs> I, whatever just, it's fresh in your mind to, yeah yeah <laughs> anyone that wants to hear about it though i'm telling them especially on stream i'm like if you're a horror fan do yourself a favor hell house llc on youtube that's the best thing is it's on youtube um so yeah you gotta watch it's just so good yeah it's it's been the past couple of years and it, it has been a sporadic uh over the past couple of decades but uh, your your city Kamloops where you live now mm -hmm. um is a bit of a uh film hub there have been projects and tv shows uh and a couple of movies uh moderately big budget to independents filmed in your town have you ever like stumbled across or witnessed or? well I, i've seen like uh when they were doing power rangers here i yeah. saw that stuff that was shut down downtown uh i i've stumbled across a couple but nothing crazy mm. you know it's it's nothing like yeah it's not like vancouver if i go down on vancouver i saw sonic getting shot and all this other stuff and it was, it's really cool but here there is a lot of stuff but not in like the, the i don't think a lot of times in the neighborhood where we'll see it right right it was actually a couple of years ago, um, and I only know this because uh, 
I, I, I don't know if it was public knowledge or if he let it out, but uh, Markiplier, Mark Fishbach, was actually filming a project in Kamloops and he shot the entire thing. Apparently, he, he like utilized an entire building and made it look like an airport and then made it look like a hospital or something like that. It was, oh, really? It was, it was a that's bit, awesome. yeah. So, uh, again, like that's his primary reason why I know that Kamloops is, is, uh, has become and is growing as a film hub. And it's beautiful the thing about British Columbia. Uh, we're both from it and both live in it, um, is uh, depending on what you want to shoot, there is something here. Yeah. Yeah. And well, the, you know, there's like desert looking places. There's, you know, there, there's a, what movie got shot just outside of here? Oh, um, the A-Team. I think it was the A-Team got shot just outside of Kamloops. Um, I believe that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of the A-Team got shot outside of Kamloops. Yeah. Uh, yeah there is a there is a there is a big community for that kind of stuff mm. uh i don't i'm not tapped into it so i can't really mm. say yes or no i wish i knew people like i would love to to just be on set and just look at stuff at how they do things i, I i'm just i'm that's the way i am i, I don't want to be in it i just want to see what you guys do like yeah, i just yeah. like l l being a looky loo you know uh when, when it comes to filming local and uh horror movies i do know that there was i my 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 knowledge of it is not the greatest but there was a movie called Dreamcatcher that was actually filmed in and around Prince George and I th I'm pretty sure Stephen it's a horror movie. movie yeah yes, there you Stephen go King. yeah uh Stephen King Dreamcatcher it had Jason Lee and who else did it have in it someone else I saw that movie yeah, yeah, yeah. I can so, believe that it, yeah it, it was it, it's all about being in the woods and in a cabin yeah <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. yeah I get it right we're, we're get surrounded it. by them here so yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> That or hockey. Let's go. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's true. That's what we have a lot of. Right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Beyond horror movies, like what are your other interests? What are your other hockey. hobbies? That's it. It's, it's oh, hockey. hockey. Yeah, it's hockey. So I do play once a week at least. Okay. Uh, all year round. Uh, in the summer, I'll play maybe twice a week. Or I do play twice a week in the summer. In the winter, I sometimes play twice a week. But then I do stick and puck with the wife, mm -hmm. you know, uh, so it's just like fun, you know, us shooting around. But I'm I'm a huge, huge hockey fan, like a, a diehard hockey fan. Um, I have season tickets to the Blazers. I'm billeting a Blazer right now. So my wife and I have a Blazer that lives with us. Uh, you know, I, I, I just I always loved it. Always yeah. loved hockey. Yeah. Uh, just for reference sake, uh, Cam Luce Blazer is a part of the WHL hockey team. Yes. 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 So not not just yeah, some guy yeah, who's so on it's fire. The, <laughs> it's, it's the Western Hockey League. It's yes. part of the CHL, which yeah. is has the OHL, the Q, and the WHL. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. From Patreon, I got a few oh, people bro. who <laughs> I, oh, I do oh, have Patreon a little bit of viewers. attention there. <laughs> I'll show you my toes for free, but the next knuckle is two dollars. <laughs> So you do subscribe. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, from I love I love your toe rings. Yeah. They're so marvelous, dude. The, when you walk on your uh, linoleum floor and you hear click, 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 yeah. it's, it's, it's really it's really a weird thing to mind now. Stop! Stop! Flattery will get you everywhere. Anyway, uh, from Patreon, Jesse asks, "I love the fact that you have fun every time you seem to go down in DMZ. Yeah. Do you love?" The reaction that you get do you goof off on purpose just to see what the other players will do yeah well yeah of course i'm baiting people for reaction of course like right. i'm gonna but like me dying if i ever die it's it's not because i want to die and right. i might play it off like that sometimes because i just died like an idiot but mm -hmm. like yeah you know when when i'm playing with people I kind of want to, I want to goof off. Like I would be with my boys, right? Like I'm going to treat you like, like a buddy and, and uh, you know, see how you react. And then if I know, like when it comes to like my boys, if, if I know something's bothering you, I'll never stop. So if, if you're in game with me and you're a random and mm. I say something and you're like, you know, you don't, not in the sense of like, um, how do I say this? I'm not being mean to them. I'm just teasing them. And then I notice like 
you know, oh, they don't like that I meow at them or like I'm a, like I like my kitty cat or my kitty cat. Like, you know, and they'll be like, stop, stop. And it's like, OK, now that I know that, you know, I can make I can make a bit out of this. Yes, right. Yeah. So it, it's fun. And I, I like I do try to push the buttons as much as possible and, and try to like I try to get reactions out of people because that's what's fun is getting a reaction. It, it being like anger or positivity it's fun uh just a side note there was one time uh you got downed and then you just started shouting gg at the top of your lungs <laughs> and i was like i was gassing myself i was laughing so hard <laughs> it was hilarious sometimes you just you like so, like yeah you have to have fun with it like even if i die i'm gonna have fun with it yeah absolutely yeah yeah amber asks off of patreon what has been your favorite collab so far and do you hope to collab with other content creators in the future that's a really good question amber actually is because collabing is very difficult hmm. um you know it, it, it's it's weird there's like so many people i want to collab with that you know i i idolize or i think they're like my but it's so hard to be like hey want to be friends like how do you go like it's so hard to go about genuinely asking people the way i i collab with people or if i know they want to collab or we figure it out like going and genuinely enjoying their content and just talking to them on their twitch mm -hmm. commenting stuff being like hey love that you did this or i'll just comment and then eventually we get a rapport going and then i can feel comfortable asking them or they can ask me but it is very hard to collab with people because you know like people ask me to collab and it's like i just don't I don't know who you are like mm -hmm. I, you have to remember that every time um every time you bring someone into your stream you can get banned right so if they say something wrong or out of turn or out of pocket that yeah. is very you know the against tos that's on you like that's that's a hundred percent on you and you can get banned for it and this is my living so i have to be careful on everything i, I bring in right and it's the same reason why i'm really hesitant and i don't do community days a lot mm is because if they say like so when you're in a video game and i say i'm in justin dmz right, right and i right. group up with someone if they say something out of turn which happens a lot actually happens you know they'll say something just derogatory bigoted whatever i mute the channel right away i mute the game channel so you can do that with press of f9 then i just run away from them and i get out of that situation because yeah. you have to do that if you stay in there and they continue saying stuff now it's your fault that you you have it in there you've but become complicit you, yeah 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 as long as you do your best to get out of that situation with voip twitch can't like they understand that you're it's not your fault but if you bring someone in from the community and then they start doing that that's on you that's who you brought into your stream that's not just some random that's the community member right right so again there's a fine gray line obviously with it all but i just it this is what i do for i have to be i have to be safe i yeah. have to be on the safe side but best best collabs i have so many like there's been there's been a lot of really goofy ones really fun ones i couldn't i can't just say one sorry amber i'm sorry <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's understandable and you know you're in a, a privileged position to be like i can't pick one it's yeah, fine no it, it's for sure i, I can't yeah. absolutely crystal asks Love the flannel. Thank you. Oh, that was just it. <laughs> okay. Perfect. I love yeah. the flannel. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that. I wear too many, so thank you. I, I will I will bounce off of that. It's like you have yeah. a merch line. Um, and what is yeah. uh, in your merch line? Mostly t-shirts. Okay. Uh, mostly t-shirts and hoodies. And actually, uh, I have a hat because I wear. I used to wear so many hats. I used to never like doing my hair but i just started to this past year but i'd always wear a baseball cap and uh my my baseball cap is uh a puff stitch and this is like the only company that would do it for me i was hunting it down so it's more like a like a baseball you know how baseball hats are beveled like that like yeah. it's not just a flat stitch yeah they would do that for me so oh. i was like okay this is the company i'm going with um i wanted to do a flannel with them but the problem is to print like this is like a print on demand kind of kind of place it's called ethos threads e-t-h-o-s okay threads so you can search geeks a ethos threads you can find my stuff there i have very canadian stuff very good i love their quality i i can't say enough good things about them but when it comes to personalized things like a flannel that i want to do or something i would have to buy say 200 of them mm. have them made and then like pay for them up front and, yeah. and and be on the line for that 
and like that's the kind of stuff i wish i could i could get some flannels for everyone but like i just i can't i, I don't have money like that lying around where i can just put it into flannels for a bit you know yeah no that's fair yeah, <laughs> yeah. or yeah. like same thing i want to do hockey jerseys and like that's another one where i'd have to put up the money and i can't do that yeah, yeah. Dean asks, when working out or doing any sort of activity, what is your playlist consist of? What is you know, what is your yeah, playlist wow, consist of? That's a good one. That's a good one. You know what? I, I, I've i just been starting the past two months really going hard at the gym again. Mm. Uh, and I'm feeling great. But uh, music is a tough one. Music's a one that I bounce around on like a lot. So uh, I, I would say like a guaranteed one is always uh, Alexis on Fire, like their first album and second album. I absolutely love anything post hardcore. I'm really down with. Mm. And then, uh, you know, some metal here and there. Oh, it's it's but but like actually on my Twitter now, I am doing something. Speaking of music, so on my Twitter, uh, it's at Geek Say with an extra H at the end. Uh, every Monday, I'm now putting out a new Spotify playlist I make. Oh, cool. So, like, last week's was a little more, like, upbeat, fun dance. Uh, this week is a, a fall one, so more acoustic, kind of chill. Yeah. Uh, yeah, every Monday, I'm just putting out a playlist that I'm feeling, and, and it's what I'm listening to. And, yeah, it's been nice. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I, got, I got one question for you, and I've been asking this of my yeah. guests as of late. And um, yeah, give her. it is... What is one thing that your audience does not know about you simply because they have not asked? Oh, that one's like it, uh, like a special yeah, trait, no. a special interest, or no? Um, <laughs> I it, I've been streaming for eight years, mm. and I've probably been asked everything about my life. But mm. I'm just trying to think here of something. Um, they're 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 like. Most people know, like, you know what? Something like I am so hard on myself that you couldn't even imagine. Mm. Like the way I beat myself up is, is unhealthy sometimes. Like I am such a, a, like when it comes to other things and like, and, and like games or, you know, streaming and everything, I'm super positive and upbeat. But when it comes to like my content, how I put out my content, the way I edit my pot content, I am I am unhealthily a, a critic on myself. Like it wouldn't you and yeah, it's it's unhealthy. I have to, I'm I'm actually battling through it and working through it right now, hmm. um, through a couple of ways. But like it's just not it's not healthy. It's not helping me. You know what I mean? Like me being like there's there's one thing where you can be a you know you can be judging your content and making it so like you're like okay you know what next time we'll do this next time we'll but like legit hating it and thinking like. There's been a couple of times where I'm like, I'm not even going to put this video out. Like I spent six hours on it. I'm not putting it out. It's bad. And like, it's better to just throw it out there. And like, what's the worst that'll happen? It, you know, the, the, the hardcore fans will, will enjoy it and it is what it is. And you know, you're, yeah, it, it's a tough one. It's a tough battle I deal with every day. It's I, like, I understand being uh, like self-critical and mm -hmm. being your own worst mm -hmm. critic. I understand that. But mm -hmm. yeah, no. And like, it, I, I appreciate the fact that you can recognize the, the fact that you are possibly pushing it a little too far and mm -hmm. the fact that you're working through it and you know you're processing it is is healthy and i commend you for that like good job thank you it's thank you. it's um i i my girlfriend does almost the exact same thing um she has you know tough days where you know she's incredibly down on herself and struggling but it, it's it's just it's because when we look at ourselves we look at our work we look at the reflection in the mirror we see the flaws whereas mm -hmm. anyone else will see like the hard work you'll see the end result they'll see the beauty or or anything related to that they don't see the flaws because they're not focusing on it so i i absolutely understand what you're saying there and again like i commend you for like it, well you, you, you can't you can't let like like a year ago, hmm. if I put out a YouTube video and it did well, I'd be on top of the world. Right. I would be like, my day would be like, this is a perfect day. I'm great mood with my, with my wife, me and the wife are doing, everything's good. Then I put out a video and it does really bad. I've, I've just never had something like that control me so much where hmm. it controls my emotions in life. Yeah. And it's not healthy. It yeah. can't be healthy. It's not like, oh, this one did bad. Okay, on to the next one. It's like, this one did bad. This is the end of my career. We're done. You know what I mean? Like, no one likes me. 
I know it. I knew it. I knew it. No one likes me. You know, it's just like it happens. It happens. You know, it could have just been like it does. Whatever. No, yeah. it, it's 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 a struggle, and it's it's even a struggle that I yeah. I I deal with on a time to time basis. It's just it's the negativity. It's a downward spiral, and it's it's hard to get out of it. You know, but. Uh, you know, like, again, like, I appreciate the fact that you recognize it and you're, you're working through it. And that's, that's very strong and healthy of you. So like, give yourself Thanks credit. Both. You're, you're doing fine. I won't, but don't worry. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I definitely won't. <laughs> yeah. That's on par, I guess. <laughs> it's who I am. It's who I am. I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying, but no. Fair enough. So, uh, before we go, and I do appreciate everything that you shared with me today and the time that you spent with me today. Um, let's, you know, give, I want to give you this final opportunity to like give a shout out uh, and uh, pimp your stuff by all means. Yeah. The stage is yours. Okay. Well, uh, guys, I'm really sorry that I sound like crap right now. I am battling through a bad cold. So thank you for sticking around. Um, if you haven't, make sure you subscribe to the channel. This is on. Right. You know, JD does really hard work. I want you to make sure you hit the follow button. Go to that Patreon. Ask other people questions. I love it. Um, but you can find me anywhere. You know, search my name. Geeks, eh? Get it? I'm Canadian. Geeks, eh? Yeah, it's bad. It's yeah. just as bad as I thought it was going to be. Right. It's just it's still bad to this day, eight years later. But um, yeah, just if you want to see any of my content, come by, hang out. I stream four days a week on Twitch.tv. Uh, I do that in the morning, so uh, I stream from Tuesday to Friday starting at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you're looking for someone else on your second or third monitor while you work, hey, I'll be that guy. If not, you can check out my YouTube or my TikToks or my YouTube shorts or my Twitter or I'm everywhere. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm even on Instagram, even though I don't really post much on it. And then I, I just made a Facebook. Even I just feel like I should be in these places, but I just... It, like, how, like, what do you, how do you, how, how do, like, people do it because they have editors and a team. But when you're on this island alone and you're trying to build, and I've had editors, right? I've had many editors, and it's just so hard. <laughs> yeah. It's so hard. Yeah. It's so hard to, like, to get an editor that, you know, you're, you're, you're feeling, you're vibing with. Plus, just the money. It's crazy how much editing is. Like, and I don't have that money. So I'm <laughs> my own editor trying to figure out life and doing all this and that. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Get it. Discord. You have a Discord as well. I do have a Discord. Yeah, uh, you can find it on like if it comes to my YouTube or my uh Twitch, it's all at the bottom there. I don't I don't I don't think I have one of those fancy URLs for it, so you have to dig <laughs> you have to dig a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. We're just two broke Canadians. It's fine. <laughs> Dude, you're telling me. You know, living the dream over here in the basement of my hole. I love my cave. <laughs> It could exactly. be worse. It, I, that, that's how I see it is. It could be so much worse. Always like I'm, I'm doing someone's dream right now. I yeah. can't be angry about it. Yeah. But at the same time, I love eating. So, you know, we have to figure out like the, the balance of the stuff. Cause you know, sometimes I have great months and sometimes I have rough months and I, every, every, every time I'm just trying to like, I'm just trying to make, like I said earlier, all I'm doing every year is making sure I can do this next year. That's all my goal is. It's not to like get a million subs. Like that is obviously a goal, but what I want is just to make sure I can do this next year. Mm. Right. So yeah. Thanks. Geeks. Eh? No problem. <laughs> yeah. Thank you everyone. Thank you everyone. Thanks for making it to the end of this episode. And if you don't mind, whatever it is that you are enjoying this episode on, be it on YouTube, the video form, or wherever you're listening to this, just, please give me a follow. That way you can keep up to date with new episodes as well. It shows me that you are listening and you want more content. And also, it helps me out a lot. So if you don't mind, follow, subscribe, whatever it is that it is possible on this platform of your choosing. And if you want to support me further, the mediajack.ca. There is Patreon. There is also other episodes and how to enjoy those and there is a merch store and of course if you join me on patreon you can actually get a shout out and be invited to ask questions to future guests or get a credit just like our executive producer yet again red wolf don again the mediajack.ca is where you can go for all of that and more thanks for joining me take care Thank you.